First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who suffered through my first video. I'd like to continue this series by showing how to make a drum kit in the Zen Beats drum machine and also go through some of its functions. My first drum machine was a Boss DR55, followed soon after by a Roland TR707. I paid cash for both of them. It was nice to be single and rich. As always, I am not being compensated in any way by anyone for this video. I just like the apps mentioned and want to convey some ways of using them. If you'd like me to cover any other topic or have any questions about Zen Beats, please put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer. I started with this one bar loop from SampleSwap.org. I chopped it into segments in the Auditor iOS audio editing app on my iPad. I made a folder for them inside Zen Beats user drum sounds folder located in the Apple Files app under on my iPad. It's there, just look for it. I'm having no problems with the Apple Files app, so I suggest you learn it. It really makes things a lot easier. Next, I created a one bar clip and a drum track in Zen Beats, and then double clicked on it to enter the drum machine editor. Roland offers about 4.2 billion drum kits and patterns in the in app store. I don't go there often. <clears throat> There are a bunch of drum sounds that come with Zen Beats drum kits, but I'm going to find my own samples that are around here somewhere. Here they are. Let's give them a preview. Not sure what's up with that last one. We'll skip it. I clicked on the thingy up top and chose to create a new drum kit and got this, an empty kit. If we hit the plus button, the sound will load, but the menu will close, so we'll drag them over instead. Now I'm tapping on the play button to preview this first drum. I want to trim the front and back of the sample, so I do that over on the left. I've requested that this waveform view be made expandable. Maybe it'll happen. Good, and on to the next one. Why am I trimming them after they were already trimmed in Auditor? Because I feel like it. And so forth for each one as I see fit. Like I said, it's art, so just do it. I can always load any of these samples in another lane and trim them differently for other sounds and feels. Now let's drop some hits into the grid. I want to make this pattern four bars, so I click on the little four square thingy and get this menu. And we'd better save this new kit or we may lose it. Notice the red rectangle around the kit name, indicating that name is in use. I'll give it a new one. I set the loop to four measures, so I have to expand the clip in the timeline so the entire four measures will play back. Each measure is playing the same pattern, but I'm going to go in and tweak them all to give them their own sense of individualism. Down at the bottom of the frame, we have a follow button and numbered buttons, which represent each measure. When follow is enabled, you can see each measure appear before you like magic as it is playing. By turning off follow, you can work on an individual measure while the loop continues to play. Pretty cool. I'm going to trim this sample and drop it into the pattern. How about reverse? I can tune it. I can filter it, high pass and low pass. By the way, all of these parameters can be automated. Adjust the panning. Let's add an effect just to this one drum, the awesome Zen Beats Multiverb. 
adjust the mix quickly up above. Save as you go or pay later. By turning off follow, I can choose what measure I want to work on without having to stop playing the loop. All music apps should do that. The highlighted button shows the loop that's currently playing, and the one with the outline is the one that appears on the screen. That's the one I'll be working on, number two. Now I'll move on to pattern three. Let's use some of the built-in automations. Just double tap on the drum header. Tap on the velocity button to open the automation menu. We'll choose pitch. Adjust to taste. Now we'll move on to pattern four by tapping on the button with the forearm. Genius. I preview the sound by tapping on the lane header and then drop in the hits where I think they'll sound good. The four square menu in the upper left shows you how many measures or bars or whatever you want to call them are in your pattern from one to eight. Roland is probably going to increase beyond eight measures for the drum machine. That'll be nice. You see the current time signature. You can choose if you want a note to play when you apply it in the grid. You can also clear the highlighted row, clear everything, whoops, or export a MIDI file. Tap and hold brings up this menu, which lets you change the sound on that lane, rename the drum, Dupe it, save the drum sound with the edits you've made over on the left, move the drum lane up or down, access the automation menu we got into earlier with a double tap, clear the row of notes or delete that particular sound. In addition to the drum grid, you also have a note editing grid which gives you some different parameters to adjust. Choose a note or a group of notes and check out the menu over on the left. Move the selected note in any direction. Move it just a little to lock in the groove. Use the move thingy there. Hit quantize to lock it back in. Adjust the starter end of the note while leaving it in place. Strength adjusts how much quantize works. 100% snap or less. You can select all notes or clear all notes. Careful! Click this arrow in the upper right and get a menu with select, multi-select, delete, cut, copy, paste, paint, and split functions. Very useful. If you tap and hold on an individual note, you get this menu. I like this part. Tap and hold on the note you want to start with and slide slowly. Go easy and you'll see notes magically appear at musically useful intervals. I started by tapping in the first cell and then slowly slid my finger to the right. Keep your finger in the lane and you shouldn't run into any weirdness. I've not lifted my finger at any time. Just keep sliding slowly right and then back to the left. Pretty darn cool. I slid to the right until each hit was divided into four parts, and then started slowly sliding back to the left to reduce the number of hits. You can also record or draw in your own automations for a number of parameters. Check out my previous video for more information on automation. You can automate almost everything, including most AUV3 instruments and AUFX.
Click on the automation icon in the track header and reveal parameters that you can apply track automation to. Same thing with the instrument editor. This is the clip automation menu. If you tap on the instrument header, you'll get a menu that will access the automation menu for that particular instrument, including automation of whatever effects are applied to that instrument. In this case, the old Zen Beats Multiverb. As you can see, Zen Beats has a lot to offer. We've only looked at a small percentage of it so far. If you have any questions or would like to see other Zen Beats tips, leave it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching.